Hello everyone, welcome to this video lecture on CMOS inverter characteristics. The static CMOS inverter DC characteristics I am going to explain in this video. Here is the CMOS inverter you can see. It is constructed by using one PMOS transistor and one NMOS transistor. Otherwise we can say PMOS fit and NMOS fit. And if you look at this particular circuit, here we have connected VDD as a power supply and VSS as a negative power supply or we can treat that VSS as ground and this is the input voltage V in and this is V out. We are taking V in, we are giving V in to the circuit from the gate of the two transistors and we are connecting VDD and VSS to the source of two transistors and we are taking the output from the drain. Okay. The circuit will be having connections like this with respect to the terminals of MOSFETs are concerned. So how actually the CMOS inverter is going to behave? When we are going to provide the voltage from V in, if the voltage is zero, it is going to provide maximum voltage from V out. And once we give maximum voltage from V in, it gives the minimum voltage from V out. Means if we say if the binary input or the digital input 0 is given from V in, we are going to get 1 as output from V out. If we give digital 1 from input, we are going to get 0 as out. That is how CMOS inverter is going to function. It is exactly invert the input voltage. So if you look at the transfer characteristics of this, as we increase V in, you can observe in x-axis I have taken V in and in y-axis we have plotted V out. So as we increase V in, how actually this V out is going to be varied. So V in in the sense starting from VSS, let us consider it as ground starting from 0. If we keep on increasing up to VDD, as I said V naught should decrease. Initially V naught will be high and then gradually it is going to decrease and we need to study this. DC characteristics. Okay, So to understand this in a better way, let us assume the input voltage we are giving uh, starting with 0 to this extent, you can see the red line here and how actually the graph V out is going to decrease. This is uh, initially from 0 to up to this level VTN, VTN in the sense it is the threshold voltage of N transistor. Uh, when threshold voltage of N transistor is VTN and the input voltage is less than that, obviously N transistor is off and this P transistor is on. For low voltages of positive voltage, this transistor is on. And as we increase further, increase this voltage further, uh, when we provide the input gate voltage above VTN, this N transistor is going to turn on. And as we increase the input further, what happens? N transistor becomes more on and P transistor is also on in this case, voltage is going to drop. And again, if we increase the input further, finally N transistor becomes completely on and P transistor is completely off. This is how the DC characteristics is going to be understood, okay, depending on the P and N transistor behavior. So then uh, we can divide this transfer characteristics into five regions. We can divide it as region A, region B, region C, region D and region E. How we are going to divide means 0 to VTN, threshold voltage of N transistor, where the output is almost constant, we can treat it as A. And from here onwards, N transistor started to turn on and to the midpoint of the voltage that is VDD by 2, we call it as region B. And at this particular voltage, at exactly VDD by 2, we call it as C, region C. And otherwise, we can treat uh, the overlapping region here, the region C, a straight line or a switching point, we can say. And this region above VDD by 2 up to VDD minus VTP. The, this is this point is considered as the threshold voltage of P transistor so that this is region D and from here onwards we can treat it as 
region E up to BDD. Okay, this is how the regions are going to be divided. Now we need to see in which particular region the transistor is in which state. In the previous video, I have explained the regions of operation of uh, N transistor. Similarly, regions of operation of P transistor can be explained. So by using those conditions, um, we can say in region A and region B, region C, region D and region E, how the transistors are going to behave in which uh, operating region. So in region A, this is the condition 0 less than or equal to V in uh, less than Vtn means V in is going to lies between 0 to Vtn. This is region A. In this particular region, N transistor in cutoff. Why? Because the condition for cutoff region for N transistor is VGSN is less than Vtn. If VGSN is less than Vtn, transistor will not turn on. Even the channel is not going to be found in N transistor. That's why we say N transistor is cut off. So let us keep on uh, looking at N transistor first, then I will come to P transistor. So in the next condition, when input is above Vtn, input is increased further, N device is saturation region. How to uh, define it is in saturation means if you look at the input and output levels clearly, the input is in between Vtn to Vtd. Let us take it as 0 to maximum 5 volts. It is less than 2.5. It is from 1 volt to 2.5. Let us take. So in the range of 1 volt to 2.5 as input, the output will be from 5 volts to Vtd is 5, 5 volts to 2.5 means this is VDS for N transistor. VDS is more and VGS is less, right? So when VDS is more than VGS minus VT, transistor will be in saturation. That's why in region B we say N transistor in saturation region. And next case when at VDD by 2, VGS is VDD by 2, VDS is VDD by 2. So the condition for saturation is that VDS should be equal to VGS minus VT, VGS minus VT. So uh, VDS is 2.5 we can take as output. Output is taken as VDS for N transistor. Why? Because output is connected or output is taken from drain, drain to source. And uh, so this can be treated as saturation region. Since VDS is, this VDS is more than VGS minus VT. So then region D, when uh, region D is uh, um, the region D, the input voltage is increasing further and output is decreasing, means VDS of N transistor is decreasing and input VGS is increasing. So if VDS is less than VGS minus VT, it is linear region. Similarly, as it uh, goes further, uh, VGS increases and VDS completely reduces to zero. Uh, it is not actually zero. This is the condition. Uh, this is the actual condition. Here you can observe the green line. It will not become completely zero. That's why we can say it is in linear region. If that goes to zero, then it may consider it as cut off. Okay. This is how N transistor is going to be analyzed uh, with respect to the previous video what I have explained. Okay. Similarly, P device. If you look at the P device characteristics here. It is clearly mentioned in which particular condition it is in linear and it is in saturation. This P device will be linear in first region, region A, again linear, saturation, saturation and cutoff. Okay. So how to remember this P other than going with uh, the actual conditions and all it means. N device will start with cutoff, saturation and then saturation and then linear, linear. But P device will be exactly reversed to this linear, linear, saturation, saturation, saturation cut off. So by looking at this only we can understand in region A one of the transistor is on. In region E again other transistor is on one more transistor is off. Means both the transistors are on only in B, C and D regions. Okay. Only in B, C, D regions there is a complete current flow from VDD to ground. If this uh, B, C, D is so linear, so straight line in the sense we can say the transistor switching or the inverter switching is so uh, accurate 
and the leakage current current flow from mediator to ground is very less why because only in these three particular conditions the transistors both are on if this is very less if it is a straight line something like this means at that particular only at that particular voltage switching point the current is going to flow okay well, let us look at uh, that later so if you look at the outputs initially v out is vdd and <coughs> v out is keep on decreasing here it is keep on decreasing it is up to vdd by 2 and in c it is exactly vdd by 2 and otherwise we can say it is reducing sharply and then in saturation region v out is reduced to less than vdd by 2 and in region v we say v out is zero this is what the very important thing we need to uh, remember or we need to understand how to write this particular uh, table to explain the dc characteristics of cmos inverter with respect to these five regions okay this is uh, what the transistors uh, uh, characteristics this is with respect to n transistor here you can observe vgsn and this is with respect to p transistor okay and current idsn and minus idsp is uh, shown here so if you take this quadrant uh, into this quadrant this this particular uh, characteristics will want to be obtained starting with here up to here it is projected in a reverse way by taking this zero as up to vdd here and taking the back projection okay so this is the dc characteristics what we have uh, seen and this is idd with respect to v in is concerned idd is uh, the total current from vdd to vss okay otherwise if we say vdd to ground where current is initially zero the current is started to flow in b c d regions in c region current is maximum when in the transistor current is maximum in the saturation region that's why in region c both the transistors are in saturation that is how we can also explain so if you look at this structures this indicates the transistor currents clearly with respect to the regions also concerned this is region a region b current is uh, the total current between the rails here you can see rails in the sense vdd and vss are ground lines the total current here we are talking about region a region b in region c the maximum current is going to flow region d and region e okay so in region c only the maximum current is going to flow if this uh, curve is so sharp like this current is almost zero we can see that's why cmos inverter will not take in much current uh, in cmos inverter almost current will be zero only at the switching the current is going to flow we say and then uh, if if you look at the transfer characteristics of the cmos inverter with respect to the beta n and beta p ratio you might have uh, known the current equation for n transistor and p transistor this is the current equation for n transistor and this is the current equation for p transistor when it is in saturation condition okay they are taking uh, this particular region c as a saturation condition and they are uh, trying to explain how actually the curve is going to vary if this beta varies beta p and beta n varies what is beta actually beta is k into w by l k is constant w and l are width and length of the transistors transistor channels okay so where k is epsilon i n is epsilon not mu divided by d where epsilon n is mobility of electrons epsilon p sorry uh, mu n is mobility of electrons mu p is mobility of holes as you know mobility of holes is lesser compared to mobility of electrons electrons are faster so by looking at these two uh, here you can uh, say this is vgs minus vtp whole square in the expression of saturation region in place of vgs they have taken v in minus vtd uh, here it is uh, for n transistor the, that's why directly taken as v in why because we are taking gate to source voltage source of p transistor connected to vdd vgs means gate voltage minus drain voltage that's why it is v in minus vdd in place of vgs in p transistor okay 
this is uh, beta n by beta p if greater than 1 if it is greater than 1 the switching point shifting to the left side if beta n beta p is equal to 1 it is at the center vd dy2 if beta n beta p ratio is less than 1 it is switching late it is taking more input to switch this is how we can uh, understand this beta n beta p variations okay if beta n and beta p varies beta n beta p means this beta p of p transistor varies with respect to beta n if it is lesser or greater the switching point is going to vary if we keep beta n more than beta p so that it will take early switching even at uh, less voltages like 1 volt 1.5 volt 2 volt like that it is going to switch from logic 1 to logic 0 if it uh, beta n by beta p is less than 1 means beta n is less beta p is more the switching uh, takes place late means it takes after uh, some 2.5 volts if vdd is 5 volts similarly beta p by beta n ratio is also uh, can be taken into account and we can analyze this this is just a reverse case beta n by beta p is shown here here beta p by beta n is shown okay this is how the transfer characteristics of dc or dc characteristics of cmos inverter is and uh, this is very important here where the regions and the particular condition for this particular regions and the condition of p and n transistors with respect to the operation is concerned and what actually the output is thank you